Are fish ladders actually effective at moving salmon past dams? One commenter is claiming that the numbers of fish which can traverse a fish ladder is insignificant compared to the natural non-dammed river. This is an excellent question, and there's real-world data that gives us the answer. When you have a dam that completely blocks upstream migration, a fish ladder is a common solution to this very real problem. A migrating adult salmon has a natural urge to follow the stream uphill, and they will keep going upstream until they find the waters that they were originally spawned in four years earlier, and then repeat the cycle. A fish ladder is designed to simulate the natural flow of the river they would expect to find, with alternating pools of fast-moving and still water to give the fish plenty of room to move upstream and rest. Each step of the ladder typically goes up by one foot of elevation. As long as the salmon or steelhead can find the entrance to the ladder, they usually have no problem making it to the top. But how does all this compare to a natural free-flowing river? In almost every case, a free-flowing river is going to be better for local ecology than a developed river. But if the goal is a completely natural environment, then the biggest problem isn't the rivers, it's our major cities. All human infrastructure alters the environment. The question is, can we live with the trade-offs, the, the pros and cons? In the case of our working rivers in the Pacific Northwest, there are a lot of environmental and economic advantages. The biggest ones being clean energy, clean transportation, flood control, and irrigation. And so if we can gain all those advantages while minimizing the downsides, I think we can all agree that's a pretty great trade-off. But the commenter was asking for data, so let's look at the numbers. Beginning in 1938, there's been a count of every fish that has passed through the fish ladder at Bonneville Dam. You see, Bonneville Dam was the first federal dam on the river before any of the dams that block habitat were put in place. Which means that we have a pretty good baseline measurement of how many fish were naturally in the river before the era of big dam building. These numbers of the Bonneville fish ladder hovered in the low millions for decades, before increasing dramatically in the 80s and 90s. Now, a lot of that is because of modern hatchery operations. It's not like all the fish just started coming back on their own. And there is an ongoing discussion about how hatchery fish may be hurting or helping the population of the wild salmon. But this graph illustrates that fish ladder capacity is not the bottleneck. As far as we know, as many adult fish want to go upriver, they can. The fish ladders and the dams that necessitated them are not the limiting factor.